Yo, yo, welcome to the No Limit Podcast, also known as the PA from Podcast. You're going to find out why, Cast. We're here once again with your mom's last, first date, any bull, and your dad's new post-divorce pool partner, No Limit Eddie. What up? Now, our guest can let you know why it's the PA from Podcast. It's the PA from PA Podcast, Prince Alexander. PA's in the building. Finally, it feels good. You know, it feels good to be here. Let's go. Nah, welcome. Glad to have you on the show. Um, I got good vibes right now. I got real good vibes right now about this show. Me and my man, uh, PA, we just had an entire conversation about audio engineering, audio mixing. Any ball hasn't said a word Not for the last yet. 20 I mean, minutes. It, it, until we started talking about wrestling, <laughs> that's when I jumped the Wrestling ball. and sneakers. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. When I, that's when I come along yeah. because I'm, I'm really in the shoes. Um, but uh, I feel like no one knows that about me. I feel like that's like random as hell that like I'm really into sneakers. Sneaks? You're yeah. into the sneaks? I'm into the, I'm into the Nike sneaks. You know, like old heads are like, oh, I got a pair of Nikes. <laughs> I got a pair of Nikes at home that are white and blue. Yeah, and they go roll ball with that. You think tennis ever, shoes? Yeah, exactly. You Monarchs. Think, you think you'll ever get a pair of Air Monarchs in your life? Yeah. But I want the black, red, and white ones, though. Not the blue, not the navy <laughs> ones. I want the ones with the red in it, the flash. <laughs> the unique Jones. Yeah, like I, I'm an old head with some flavor. What are you doing over there? Packing a little bowl? Packing a bowl? Packing a fucking bowl, smoking on gelato. Gelato. <laughs> you know. So, wait, all right. So, what are we talking about this week? We're going to talk about a well, bunch of things. Well, we're going to talk about... First of all, we're going to cover our man, Prince Alexander. Yeah. Second of all, we're going to get into a few, few topics with him. Uh, number one being the Cain Velasquez incident. For sure. That but you guys are going to tell me about it because I don't know shit about it. We're basically going to inform any bull on what that is. He doesn't. He hasn't really been following it at all. Um, I buried my head in the sand a long time ago. And then we're also, <laughs> we're also going to talk about... Uh, how what was the second one you gave me? Uh Instagram. Is it how it's a game? Yeah, it's just fucking any, any anything goes and no one's figured it out yet. Like I feel like no one's on the <laughs> It same is the way. Wild Wild West. It's just like no one's figured it out yet. Like anything goes. I mean Like there's no rules to anything. It's completely random. It's like subliminal. Like everything about it, like it's just like, dude, alright, we'll go into it. We'll go into it. We'll get into it right now, honestly. That can be right. that can be first. All right, fuck it. And Dude, you I'll see a give post, an example right? of what it's, you said wait, wait, last real week. Real quick, this is the this is one of the only platforms. Obviously, Twitter you can do this too, and Facebook and stuff like right. But like, someone can post a picture of themselves, right? Yeah. Like a girl can post a picture of themselves, like all, like all done up, like about to go out, and like guys are like, I like that, and you're you're gonna know it right now. I'm a fan. You know what I mean? Immediately, it's like the it's right. like the, it's the easiest and quickest way for validation to find out who's fucking with your shit. Right. But that's that's one form. But they it's also, not a tweet, right? But, it's not words. It's a picture of you. But they're doing, doing that on purpose too. It's sure. So they they, they they like I'm sure Facebook and Instagram obviously they've studied like human psychology of like their users, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they're like all right like they have it set up to like where if you do like a bunch of pictures like for example i'm i'm an artist i'm a musician so i'm like liking other people's posts and and engaging with other people's stories that are similar to me so when i look in my explore it's just what like it's yeah. i'm literally going to like every one because it's potentially what it what i could like and they do that with girls right. too right. you yes. like exactly yes. exactly you, exactly that's what i'm saying yeah. so what you were just building up to is that you like a bunch of stuff that has to do with music that has to do with engineering yeah. uh, equipment and you get shown more of that stuff i was thinking the same thing about if you are consistently liking pictures that girls are posting just for attention, or even on the other end, if you're if you're liking pic- pictures guys are posting just for attention, that's gonna start coming up in your explore page over yeah. everything else, which turns Instagram from like like I but said, that's we, one lane. That's one lane. What you're talking about because what you're talking about is a whole nother lane. You can use Instagram as a tool to actually find useful information toward your profession or you can use Instagram as a tool to just be horny and like girls Definitely. pictures and whichever one of those you choose Instagram is going to push you further Definitely. towards didn't um, Kendrick Lamar say that one song Instagram is the easiest way to promote some pussy or something like that like, yeah. it's literally, like, you can do that, you can, but you can promote music, too. We can promote our podcast. It's the easiest fucking it's, it's way. It's fucking weird, though. To promote. It's fucking weird, because, like, you know, like, you'll like one person's picture, right? And then you'll start to see the same kind of, per- like, the same look, the same, like, fat ass, or right. the same yeah. big titties. Like, you'll start to get, like, five of them instead of one in your explore page. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, it's, you know, it's... That's my nature to fucking like that shit. Men of America, would your girl be pissed if she saw your explorer page right now? Oh, yeah. See, I don't know exactly what mine would be because, to be honest, it's crazy that we're going this exact route with the conversation because I've been looking for a good reason to put this on the airwaves. 
that I have gone and tried to remove all horniness from my social media. We medias. should, all three of us should screenshot our explore page after this podcast. Oh my on God. The podcast page and people got to guess right who's fucking. No, seriously <laughs> though. Oh I feel like you just brushed over that. I have gone past people, and if I think in my head that I only follow you because I want to see... It's not that bad. You, you got were. one. You got one. I got William Regal. <laughs> William Regal. And, I, and no, I, I think that if I, I if I only follow you because I want to see you post the pictures of your body, I'm going to unfollow because that, that's not a good reason to be following somebody. They say, they save you in case your girls watch, and they put all the wrestling and Mac Miller shit up front, and then when you scroll down, that's when all the guys <laughs> <to> show up. <laughs> but... Uh, I don't like any of these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure. I hear what you're saying, though, because, like, I recently did, too. You, you keep a few hanging around, like, accounts that you just follow for that reason, but by and large, like, I've unfollowed so many shit. Because like, some pages. of them aren't even famous. It's not like you're out there following celebrities. You come across a page where a girl's just posting half-naked pictures and she's got 15,000 followers. You're and, like, she, and the location says, like, King of Prussia. Yeah. And you're like, no, they don't say, like, fucking Nashville, Tennessee. And it's like, well, I'm not out there. And I don't know you, so why am I following? Yeah, it's a yeah. it's it's an odd game. It's all also, horniness. But I want people from Nashville, Tennessee, to follow me without uh, knowing me. Remove all horniness no, from your I think you talk about the it's the most important Hashtag. thing, right? Like, when you, and it's with everything. It's literally with life, right? Is like we're men, so we're just always fucking trying to fuck something. You right. know what I mean? Like we're always trying to, and no matter mu- and no matter how much someone can give us. The, the flaw with men is that we want more. Mm-hmm. We just, and I, Different. it's sickening. Yeah. Every other it's mammal disgusting. in the world moves on from hole to hole. Yeah. You yeah. don't think that in reality men were probably designed the same exact way, mm. and every day you have to, like, now we've been in society for long enough that it's been like trained into us on how to act like a civilized human being, but I'm sure that our species started out the same way yeah. as every other one. But like, humans are definitely I more, agree, yeah. humans are definitely more conscious though than every other mammal, so there might be like an element to that that and makes that's us what, more and I like think, you know, connected the, with another We like just went from person. horniness, right, yeah. to something really deep, right, because yeah. it's, yeah. I, and you think about, you think about this shit all the time, I don't think, I think people who don't think about like where humans come from or why we have a conscious Conscience or why we feel like we have souls. I don't think you're living you at think that you have point. A soul? Absolutely, oh, I wouldn't be. This is a good I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be talking like this. I think souls have a lot to do with like deja vu too. There's a reason why you have deja vu. What like you know? Like, Bro, we've gone into this on the podcast before. I want to like, hear what you say like, about deja vu, dude. It's like I see shit. Like you know, you drive. Like for example, on this drive, I was going through Germantown and shit. And like I'm looking. Like even just the slightest glances, you've already thought about it. Or it's like, damn, I already looked at that shit before. You know, and it happens. It just reoccurring. It just happens and happens. So I think that has a part to do with like, um, you know, our souls live forever, but maybe these vessels don't. Yeah. You know, maybe these vessels. We talked don't. about both these concepts before: the concept of deja vu, the con, the newer concept of vessels. Yeah. Do you got anything more on that? Yeah, dude. I I got everything on that. I I think that uh, like I believe I. It's not that I necessarily. This like when you say the word believe, it's just the answer that you're concluding in your head. Mm. It's not necessarily that it's right or wrong. It's just like your brain is trying to find solutions. That's like point of our brain and shit. So like what I'm like what I'm gearing towards is just like, you know, I believe in like reincarnation and stuff like that. And like I think that the ultimate peace is to never come back. You know? So you think never that come our back soul as gets anything reincarnated? As anything. You're done. Like, you're you're part of space. Mm. Because all of our elements are found in space. Yeah. So I think, and this can go even deeper, I also wonder what space is all the time. And like, like I said, if you're not thinking about these kind of things, are you really living? Or, yeah, are, are, you, you or, or are you living in the Instagram world? Or are you like living in this fucking bubble? You know, and that's why we have such... The bubble that's bubble a good ass point. Like, just like, are you actually alive on planet Earth? Yeah. And like, really experiencing real life. And not just, you're not just a credit score. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But we're, but those things matter. Sure. The sure. people who succeed are the people who care about those credit scores and the people who think outside the box. But well, life goes on well. beyond a credit score. Exactly. So you really got to understand, or at least try to at least understand where you come exactly. from and what you're about. Exactly. You know what I mean? We have no idea why we're here. It's actually crazy that that you came with that take after you just said that you're um, in your profession that you're a corporate artist. Yeah. 
So first of all, just because we kind of went right hard into that Instagram topic and I loved yeah. it, introduce yourself, what you do and everything for the people and then try to go into what we just talked about a, of a corporate artist. Because those two worlds right there, that's something no limit. Everything you just talked about, that spiritual world, deja vu, all that, and then mixed with the fact that you, you consider yeah. yourself a yeah, corporate artist. Yeah, I mean, artist. and that's a part of me, dude. Like, I don't think... I don't think that I'd be able to be the music artist that I am if I didn't like really care about those kind of things or like think about those kind of things. Like, because it comes from the soul. Like, I'm never trying to, I'm over the phase of like my idols like motivating me. Mm. Like, none of that shit motivates me. But I'm, you know, PA from PA, Prince Alexander, and you know, I'm an artist, period. Um, But I would consider myself an MC first who's versatile enough to go into other genres as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't just go into other genres just to say that I can do it. I really go in there paying homage and like trying to respect what the genre is. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Everything's about respect for me, especially in music. Like it's the one place and the reason why- And what genre do you consider yourself? um, I consider myself hip hop. Hip hop? Yeah, I, w- I thought it leaned a little more toward pop. Yeah, we were listening. We were like, I can see this being like there was like a like a pop record. Yeah, that and one? that's what I'm certainly. I think I'm going towards that direction. What was the name of the song? Uh, flashing lights and ruin my mood. Yeah, so yeah. those. So that's interesting, right? Like if you listen to my previous music before, it would be like hip hop rap. I am going in that direction, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's pop. I'm still. It's still hip hop because it's coming from my soul. Like yeah. these aren't li- like these are all real life lyrics and stuff like that. Well, I also and, think all the best musicians also always experiment with different sounds every time they put out and, the music. And know? I'm evolving still. Right. Like I'm evolving. Like I couldn't. Like I love rapping, man. I love spitting bars and I love doing all that shit. But the problem is, is like when you do it so much. And then you want to be professional, like I said, like and the meaning. What I mean by like a corporate artist or something like that is, I want to go into the industry. Like I want to be an industry artist. I don't really care like to just be known as an underground. Like why should I stop? You know, yeah. like why should I stop? And so that when I say corporate, it means I'm always checking my boxes and uh, making sure that shit's done correctly. And like I'm at the point where I'm like thinking of this shit as a product. And I need to make sure that I can give the best product to the people who care. I don't care if 50 people like it, 100 people or more. I just want to give them the best me. And I'm finally able to give them the best me. I don't have to cut corners anymore. I've Mm -hmm. earned what I've earned and I've learned the skills in order to make it work. You know, for someone. It's actually funny you say that because when we wanted to start this show, uh, that was the first thing we said is that we won't put anything out until it's 100% done correctly. Exactly. Everything will be completely professional down to yeah. the description. Like literally everything about it will be serious. I think it's just I just lost my feelings into this shit. Like I have no feelings when it comes to this at all. Cutthroat. It's it's very cutthroat and it's I like I have a soul in real life. That's why I think about like, you know, life after death and like, you know, romance, love, monogamy and like porn, like, you know, all that kind of shit. Like not watching porn but just how the bad effects of it right. might have had on me. Um, so yeah, with my music, like, I don't know what genre would describe me, but I'm certainly becoming the real authentic version of myself that like, I would, if I was younger, I'd be like, damn, like you're still the same kid. Like you didn't switch up, like you were close to switching up, but you didn't like switch up on who you really are. And I think it's coming out through the music. That's why it is sounding more pop. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the streets. I'm not like living some kind of thugged out life. Sure. You know, I might be in certain situations and, you know, perception is reality. Yeah. Pictures might look like something, but I'm always in control of my environment. And that's why, like, I look up to like people like Vince McMahon and Dana White and shit Leaders. like that. LeBron James. Professional. They're professionals. You see the Lakers currently, right? I'm a huge Lakers fan. You see they're getting shit on right now, right? Yeah. Now, there's two ways you can look at it. Russell Westbrook doesn't deserve any of the... Okay, um, why are you a Lakers fan? Well, I'm a Lakers fan because I'm a first-generation Indian American, right? So when my dad moved here, he was 16. He moved to California. He moved to L.A. And that's where he did his, you know, college and post-grad and shit like that. Bro, correct me if I'm wrong. Nav? Is he Indian? He's Indian, but see, I'm Bengali. He's a different kind of Indian. Okay. But we're all... The, yeah, I mean, he's Indian. So I just can't he, really rock He considers with himself a brown boy. Do you consider yourself that or? I don't know because here's the thing. Um, like I never grew up with any other brown friends. Okay. So like sometimes like I love my culture, bro. And I feel like I represent it so well. I don't ever say like I don't say the N word in my music like Nav does. 
You know what I mean? Like Does I don't. Really? Yeah, like I Does don't. He? I don't like. Yeah, like if you listen to Biebs in the trap and shit. That's why I like. I love that song, but I couldn't get behind it because of hmm. this city that I came up in, being hip hop, and like you know, I'm sure like I've made my fair share of mistakes. But one thing I won't do is like cause myself failure by setting myself up to be non-authentic. Yeah. You know, I want to be a leader in this shit. I'm a leader of men. I'm not like a, I'm, this isn't some playboy glitz glamour. I want some fly shoes. Like I want to be one of the best at music. Yeah. In general. I, sure. I was just sitting here thinking if you saw me like dozed off, I was singing that whole nav part of Beeves in the Trap trying to find where he said it. Yeah, and it's not an aggressive. I, I listen to it, and that's fine. It's completely yeah, okay to, like, the masses that appreciate it, but being, like, representing, like, hip-hop, and that's why I say I'm rap hip-hop, because it's just authenticity. Like, once you lose that, like, that authenticity, I don't know. Like, no, it, then it's just, you, like, uh, it's pop. Like, it's pop, then. I only ask you why you're a Lakers fan, because you, you're going back to, like, being professional. Like, Kobe Bryant was super professional. Well, yeah, he's my and, idol, like, too, so... yeah. The reason I became a Lakers fan is like 2001 in the finals, really. And that's when I really got into basketball. And I didn't want to be like, everyone was rocking Iversons and like, mm -hmm. you know, it was fucking amazing at that time. I'm sure. I don't remember like all like. He's the only the reason they were there. Yeah. yeah. And so, but watching the Lakers, bro, was something else. Like I literally fell in love with the Lakers, Kobe and Shaq, Rick Fox, Robert Ory, Derek Fisher, all these guys yeah, great team. that I really just got into. Like I, I wasn't into, like I'm, I'm an original Lakers fan too. Um, I'm not like a fan just because LeBron came there, you know, but I do love LeBron hair Kobe. too. Kobe. Kobe with hair. Kobe with number eight. Like, <laughs> number eight. I mean, it goes so far as back, like, you know, when Kobe had caught his charge or whatever, like I just got my first, uh, I think I was like in sixth grade or something like that. And I just got, like, the, my mom bought a Kobe jersey from Ross because she wouldn't buy me a brand, like, you know, a brand new jersey. Yeah. Shit. So it was, like, That's from funny. Ross. The one episode we were talking about the football jerseys. How you go find a fresh John and Ross some? Yeah, from last, from two years. Like you'll find like a Matt Stafford fucking uh, jersey with the Lions, you know. Yeah. Stitch boy though. Yeah, well, it'll like be fresh. like twenty five bucks. It's like fuck it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. If, if you're a sports fan, it's great. But Hold yeah, on to it for some years, yeah, and it just becomes a throwback. Yeah, but yeah, it's man. already a throwback, honestly. So I got that jersey time. in middle school, and then she just returned it because of the case. But uh, I really respect Kobe. I approach. There's two people I approach this game and like just my life like. And, like, one of them is Lil Wayne, and then the other one's Kobe Bryant. Dude, I feel like so many guys our age have Kobe Bryant as, like, a gigantic inspiration in their life. Yeah. That's really why I ask. Cause... Like, and that's why I say I'm a corporate rapper, because, like, I just, I want to be professional, and I never know if, like, a kid is watching or something like that. Like, I curse sometimes, and I do all this kind of, I'm kind of crazy at times, but, like, I want to make sure that, like, you know... I inspire the right way. Yeah. When in a world where I everything's negative. I think the last negative. two songs that we talked about, Flashing Lights and Ruin My Mood, those were both dope and they're I not, would let any kid they're not, listen to they're it, not too, Yeah, they they're not too cool. derogatory. And like, yeah. even with Flashing Lights, I started releasing the clean versions. Yeah. So like you my, did do that, what was that, like radio edit? Yeah, so radio edit. Yeah. So like for, for even my next single, So What, um, I have a clean version that I'll release too. Okay. Because, you know, I, you and, never know who's listening. Yeah, dude, I mean, like if you like... If you go into a store, right? Say you walk into a, like a store in the mall. They're playing music that's not family friendly. No, but you it's clean. I mean? But it's clean. Right. Like, and, and if you're just listening from like a distance, you're not really paying attention to what they're saying. It just sounds like a nice pop song. But if you really pay attention to the lyrics, you're like, what the fuck are they talking? Like, about? yo, I walked into Paxson the other day, and they were playing Push and P. And, like, yeah. I was fucking buying, like, I was like, oh, let's spend some fucking yeah. money in here. Dog, like, you know? am, am I the only person in, that's... I just don't. I don't get it. I still don't get the it. The song. I still don't. Get I love it. it. Yo, it, you have to just. I, it's you just got to understand. Like you're either pushing P or you're not. I understand that. <laughs> I really do. I really do understand that point of it. But I still just can't grasp. Like, why? Then you don't got the P. Like then, if you don't get it, you just don't get it. I think that's what it really is. It's either you, you get it what? or I, you don't. I, I always been an outsider. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now on a No Limit Airwaves. I am not pushing no P. <laughs> I am pushing zero P. Push a P every pushing day. Zero P, bro. <laughs> P is dead. It's dead, easy. Dead, it's easy to say it for me because you know Prince Alexander P. A lot oh, of my, yeah, yeah. a lot of my friends call me P. So uh, P I'm always pushing P, bro. Like, <laughs> hey, work. I'm pushing P. You know, I'm this, this. I'm juicing the little skills and talent that I have, and I'm giving it back to like my clients and shit. 
you know. Honestly, if I, I like, if I were to push P, I would sell fake piss for people to take drug tests. <laughs> pushing P. <laughs> pushing P. <laughs> pushing P. Yo, I'm yeah. out here pushing P, yo, for real. All right, is it time to give Danny a lesson on uh, King Velasquez? Yeah, sure, so what's the yeah. Fuck King Velasquez. That. All right. What happened? So, uh, before we move Former on, tell them when champion. they can expect that new single called So What? Yeah, they can they can expect the new single within the next six to eight weeks from when this podcast is going to come out. So, probably, right. what's what's today's date? The 9th? Yeah, in the beginning of April. Yeah, it'll be out in a couple of days, like 11th, 10th, maybe. Um, Oh, beginning of April, are you going to do a video? Already done. Oh, it's oh. already done. So, it's dropping with a video. Yeah. In April. Word. Yeah. Damn, and, and, and the live version's already done too. I shot a whole other video like I did. Let us get like a 15 second clip. We'll preview it right Definitely. now. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. Preview it yeah, right yeah. now. Absolutely. Yeah. I got right you. Now. Yeah, we'll put that right in. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This was the first song. Sorry to interrupt you, but this, nah, go I just got to get this one off. This is the first song that like uh, you know, I produced myself. Right, I've only been producing for like two, three years, but I found my niche with it. Like, I'm actually good at it. I didn't, that shiny shit. Um, yeah, like that, that sheen, that uh, <laughs> that glisten. Yeah, I'm actually good at it. So this is the first one that I'm releasing that um, I produced myself. Like, so I own 100% of this shit. Like, yeah, I've never released a song that I owned 100% of this shit. So this, everyone buy it for 99 cent on the Apple Store. Exactly, sure. exactly. And you know, I might, I might even put it on Bandcamp too. Like, shout out to Bandcamp. You know what You're I mean? You're gonna put it up for a price or a name your price? I'll put it up for like like a dollar on yeah. Bandcamp. Like whatever it is, like yeah. ninety nine cents a dollar. But you know, I'm also gonna be coming out with some merch too. Uh um, oh, yeah. with the single as well. I'm gonna go on a little run with this. And yeah. then I'm looking to maybe drop an E P like of this kind of music. This is just pure rage and it's just a great song to just turn up to and say fuck you to because it's so what? Like you can be whoever you are, but it's like so what? It's like so what? No limit. So, my soul so, will go on. Fuck so it. what? Like if you know, if you like, whatever you work for, a, for like a trash company. So what? I'm still making more money than most people. Like people don't realize these things. Like you know, they always like down like manual labor and like hard labor. But like those guys make more money than, uh, you know, people that work in retail. Bro, there's came a, from retail. There's a lot, of and people. it's fucked. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But that's you used how to it work is. at T-Mobile. Yeah, I used to work at like T-Mobile, Verizon. Um, so I come from a retail background, yeah. sales background. Yep. I know it all too well. It's all (laughs) fucked, you know? And my mama does too, man. It's like, I never see my mom, you know? Like, I never, like, because we, even as I get older, we still both are working, you know, I work, now I can be an audio engineer and an artist full time. But, uh, you know, even my days, I treat it as a nine to five. I'm working 40 hours a week. This isn't like, oh, I don't feel like working today. Like, I'm booked Mm -hmm. out like two, three weeks in advance, luckily. Right. So, Luckily, yeah, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, but it's a blessing. Gonna, but you're going to slip no limit Eddie in for a session. For sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 100%. For sure. So, yeah, what's, what's going on with Cain Velasquez? Well, no. Now, real quick, oh, we're going we're gonna to preview the video. Oh, I'm already we'll doing that. Cain Velasquez. Now he gave us... When we pull up, so what? Hmm. Ballin' like Israelis, I can call it, so what? Hmm. I done took some showers in the sewer, so what? Got the money and the power, 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 so what? Edit it right now. Yeah, either way. We only need like 15 seconds of it. So. But now we're going to move on to tell any bull about this terrible tale, to be honest. Enlighten me. Terrible tale. Well, obviously, yeah. So, obviously it's horrible. What do you know? You know I just what's know the that he's being accused you know? of murder. Being accused of murder. You yes. don't know You don't know what he did. No, nope. do- okay. I know nothing. I just know so, that Kim Velasquez is being, a former heavyweight champion of the UFC, is being accused of murder. Okay, so uh, if you've been living under a rock, uh, <laughs> full disclosure, mate. <laughs> I live on the rocks. Um, bro, last week you were sleeping. You bro, I was came, like, yes. came out on a rock <laughs> before last week's episode. Cain Velasquez, his daughter, four years old, she goes to a uh, daycare. Who The daycare is like run by like a family friend, like uh, this older lady or something. But there's a few kids there. Like it's not. Is like, it a daughter or is it his son? Daughter. Okay. Pretty sure it's his daughter. Uh, um, that's disgusting. Now, the... Uh, four-year-old daughter, bro. All right. So... Uh, 
it's a daycare. There's other kids there, whatever. They're being watched by this lady, and there was an employee of the daycare uh, who was apparently sexually assaulting Cain Velasquez's daughter in the bathroom multiple times, like many, many, many times, four years old. Probably other kids, too. The dude, I think, said, like, his first statement on it was, like, all I did was help a kid put his pants on right one yep. time or something. But apparently they're alleging that he molested Cain Velasquez's daughter specifically on multiple occasions and other children at the home as well. Right. So the guy goes to trial and gets out on bail. Yeah, he you gets out this. on bail. Yeah, so, yeah, he gets out on bail and... Uh, yeah, he's he's basically on not on non secured bail. Awaiting trial. You just, yeah, you just get a you know something on like a summons. Know, it's like a house arrest. He yeah. just got put on house. But he's arrest. waiting to go to court. But it's now, like a GPS because he's allowed to go wherever he wants. He's got to know where he's at. Yeah, and the interesting part about that is fucking so, sick. So yeah, basically okay. this so guy. So we didn't even get to what Kane did to him yet. Yeah, go ahead. Let's get to what he did, so and then I'll throw in. While some. the guy's out on bail. Yeah, that uh, that little tidbit Dude, that we talked hell, about I, outside. Obviously, so while the guy's out on bail, but you're gonna molest fucking Cain Velasquez. Well, he daughter. doesn't know. Yeah. I'm sure. What's crazy is I I wanted to get into that. Like, did someone tell this guy? Was this guy informed at some point? Yo, that's Cain Velasquez's daughter. And like, what his reaction to that was? If that happened, I don't know if that happened until their altercation. Like, if he knew what what he had done. Uh, so what did Cain do to him? Uh, Cain. Did something very nice to him, honestly. He shot him. Tried to shoot him. Attempted to shoot him. Because what everybody's saying is, you're Cain fucking Velasquez. You could literally maul this man. And you don't have to kill him. You could beat him within an inch of his life. He's literally and like, come back every him. single month and do it again and again and again. And just beat the balls off him forever until he goes to jail and then gets fucking... Him in jail, he's in trouble anyway. Because, like... They, they don't and play he's going to be that infamous because he was in jail. Exactly. Yeah. And then other people were saying, I heard this on another podcast, like, first of all, the dude is a member of the Mexican community. The Mexican community are huge fans of Cain Velasquez. They know who this man is now. They yep. know where he lives. Like, exactly. he's not safe at all. But anyway, Cain Velasquez took matters into his own hands. Uh, he got a pistol, shot it at the guy. The guy was with his father. The rapist was with his father. His father dove in front of the fucking bullet. Like, that's how they exactly explained it. His father Wait. dove in front of the bullet, and the bullet hit the guy's dad. Now, the guy's dad luckily did not die. It did hit him somewhere where it could have been fatal. How old is this guy? Who? The, the guy father? No, the molester. Yeah, probably like 30s, 40s. Okay. And the guy's dad jumped in front of Cain Velasquez's bullet and got right. killed. Right. No. It hit him somewhere where he could have got killed. That was the, that was the controversy in the beginning. Because if he would have died... Then it would be murder. But because he lived, now Cain Velasquez is being tried for attempted murder rather than murder. Oh. I thought he actually and then, did kill somebody. Now the bail thing. Yeah, they're not. Jump they, back so, in on that. So then I was, you know, we, were, we I knew we were going to talk about this. So I just quick, like, looked up some stuff. And I had heard about it. And, you know, there's a lot of UFC fighters uh, supporting Cain and stuff like Free that. Cain. And it's like, yeah, it's like I, you totally understand. But here's the thing that's a little fucked up, right? Um the guy who touched his daughter got got out on bail. Yeah, he's just wearing that GPS thing. The right. judge will not give Cain Velasquez uh, any bail. Like he doesn't. He's not allowed to do. So any since he's bail. been taken, so he's in, still he's, locked up. He's in jail. He's yeah. not getting because he's not because, getting bail. And the reasoning is because they say that he's a danger to the society. Yeah, because he's because it was Velasquez. such an insane act. But I why actually, is that an insane act? But I actually think that. He doesn't want to ask that question. It's a good question to be asked. He doesn't want to ask it because I feel like if I got the one judge more thing too. keeps him... Go ahead. I got one more thing. Uh, the other crazy fucked up part that I just saw uh, before is, uh, you know, they released some documents and stuff like that. So the guy did not... I don't think he worked there. He lived above the daycare. Hmm. He didn't even work the there. Fuck? So that's what makes it even worse. It's like, dude, you're like fucking luring in these like, kids and helping them fix their fucking pants the fuck is wrong with you i don't know like what person thinks that's okay and then like obviously the kids are gonna say something because that's just not normal what well, yeah right. what four-year-old five-year-old do you expect to like shut the fuck up they so before the rage that would come over a man finding out that this man is molesting their four-year-old daughter is probably the most of a just shooting that could possibly ever exactly, exactly. and right 
the thing for Cain Velasquez is that he want he actually spending this time in jail because the judge saying he's a danger to society is actually probably better for his case because if he gets a good enough lawyer, they said what he could argue is that when he found out the information, he literally went insane. Like right. he had a brief moment right. of insanity, which if proven that he had a brief moment of insanity, he could reduce his sentence from going like a back possible to, 15 years to like 18 months. Right, and going back to what you said, why would Cain Velasquez, somebody's biggest Hindu good mom, just shoot him? Because he did just go insane. Yeah, yeah right? definitely. He just, definitely. I'm, I'm getting a pistol and killing the guy because he's just he's seeing red and black. Right? Absolutely. So he doesn't even have the thought like, oh, I can just kick this guy's ass forever. Fuck him. You know what I mean? And now, to after we've told you the story hmm. about it, to go absolutely no limit. Uh, I got a lot of this information from another podcast. And what, what they said on um, the whole thing was that they don't want to live in a world where um, that dude gets bail and then Cain Velasquez takes matters into his own hands, doesn't get bail, and gets a more harsh sentence. They don't want to live in that world. I want to take it one no limit step further. We have so much of the means of, of everything. I always say we're the most advanced beings that the world has ever seen. We're the most advanced society that the world has ever seen. I know we have our laws. I know we have built these things over hundreds of years. But why can't we lo- start to look at situations like this individually and be like, you know what? We're going to make an example out of this guy. We're going to throw all the fucking cases out the window, throw everything out the window. Like, this is such a special case. This is Cain Velasquez and a man who molested his four-year-old daughter just set up a fucking bare-knuckle brawl between them two and televise it. Like, why can we not just come together as a society to say that this is a unique situation and we all just need to watch this guy be (laughs) mutilated live? You're going to watch it. Like it's just I think, fact I, I think everybody would tune in. Everybody would tune in. It everybody would be the in. most viewed thing ever televised. And I think time. I think it would and, probably for the rest of time. And yeah. for any fucking creep out there who sees that, I, yeah, like oh wow, that could never do it again. Happen. Nah, dude, I don't know. I where where did it, where did this happen in Mexico? No, California. Oh, so it's in it's in the U.S. I believe. Okay, it's in the U.S. All right, well, shit, man. Yeah, this just seems the U.S. is fucked. You know, with their judicial system. You know, a lot it of the is, times, like a lot of weird. A lot of the stuff. times, it works out because you have the lawyer. Like, why should it ever be like that? Like, yeah. that's why. Yeah, can't can't Cain Velasquez afford a great lawyer? Now he, he and, can, and, and and even with the way the system's set up now, like we're obviously never going to get the fucking cage match. Like that guy as a as a rapist pedophile. Well, he's prison, done for anyway. Now in now prison, he's, he's there, going right? to get destroyed. Yeah, he's going to have a pretty. He's going to suffer a pretty negative fate for it's what he did already. Public. Yeah, no, I don't yeah think, it is. It I is think. the the pedophiles. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, it is. yeah, yeah. He's got like hella protection though. Yeah, like, but they, I, mean, I think they gave him like yeah. fucking hella yeah, protection. I'm sure he's got. Yeah. What a piece of shit, man. And yeah. I, I, so I this whole time I thought honestly it, I think you're a piece of shit if you protect him. If that's your job and they tell you to go protect that dude and someone comes to beat the balls off him and you let him, well, you know that you chose to be a police officer at that yep. point though. You got to do your job, right? You know, yeah, there's not much you can really like do at about that, that point. Quit your job then. Yeah, and then you know. Yeah, hey, I guess. But it's like you know, that's why it's like, man, if, it's like it's like fuck the police. But there's a, there's like few good cops, you know. But now I got this is a crazy tangent. Does the Secret Service get hired by the president? Or is there a secret service that adopts every new president? I like, think there's a you, secret like, service that adopts so like, every new like president. president? What if you're a Secret Service guy, but you don't like the guy who just got voted in? Then That's not a then, thing. And you're like, oh, I'm going to go get a, I'm, I'm gonna get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I looked into a lot of shit. Like, I think um, the world, first of all, America, we're on top, right? Right. And like, it's not because of our, what we're like, what they see our strengths are. It's yeah. what they don't know, yeah. you know? And I think America has certain information, especially like World War. That's why this Russia, Ukraine shit's crazy. But it's not to the level of, like, World War Two because, yo, know, like, Hitler was fucking going around taking these historical artifacts and these, like, really religious artifacts and, like, storing them in his archive and shit. Hitler was going to the world. He was going to, like, he was trying to be the number one shit, right? But, like, he, we've lost so much of our history that, like... You know, if modern science looked at some of these documents or looked at some of this shit, that they might be able to find new conclusions, 
and we've lost so much because of World War Two. But I think I truly believe the world history, like the world, became modern like after World War Two. We really haven't changed at all. Yeah. Like there has been others that are sitting in their room having a podcast like this without the microphones. Obviously, the technology. I think wasn't, that that was probably they were just having talks like, like the, this. The most connected world event ever, at, like until that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. World War Two became the biggest connected world event ever. And, and then you saw like all these like alien the United shit. States, the United States wasn't in World War One. You know what I mean? And we didn't even try to get into World War Two until we got bombed by Japan. You know, like it was just a whole world conflict. So I, I definitely think that that cr- made the world smaller. And I think a lot of the technology and like the secrets that the Nazis had figured out, that thing they were, dude, they were so advanced. Like yeah. their science fucking pro, like look at uh, all those scientists, it, all those the, scientists stayed there and just the dude's for years. Name? You know what I mean? What's the dude's name? Albert Einstein. Yeah, like he's German. Like yeah. he was working for the fucking Nazis, right? All those was dudes, he? Yeah, no, all no. those dudes. Yeah, came they, to America they had after. to. They, they all like, came to America after. They all came to America. And then did you like? This is all the way out there. But like, I've also watched and done some research about certain people in the Reich going down to uh, Colombia mm-hmm. and shit like that. Yep. And there's German, Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. It's Argentina, about Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. And there's like there's like germ like German towns in Argentina and yep. shit. But you know what? Fuck Hitler, man. And that's why, I like, the world, you know, is not... Yeah, it, that the, is. Hitler is on instant beef board. We got instant beef yeah, for Hitler. Yeah, because they're no not... Nation. Dude, and you should put fucking Putin on there, too. Because, like, nobody's fucking with him. Like, he's... You know, he's got... Think, uh, he earned it, right? He's fucking up, dude. Yeah, he is fucking up. He's fucking up, man. All these, all these dudes fuck up. They're you know, fucking, Napoleon, Putin, Hitler, they all fuck up. South Philly Wawa's fucking up. South Philly Wawa's fucking up, dude. Oh, my God. South Philly Wawa's out of pocket. Putin, I saw a <laughs> video of him, like, doing a... You know how they always have those videos of Kim Jong-un, like, just doing fake shit? He's another like, one who's just gonna fuck he up He tells his people that, like, he invented the hamburger and shit. And they, <laughs> and they believe yeah. it. Like, there was a video, though, of Putin, like, working out. And just the way, like, he was doing it and his outfit, I know that man... Never works out. Mm-hmm. He woke up that day and was like, "Oh, today's the day we're filming the workout." Why he's like people probably aren't allowed to work out the way he is, and he just like he shows the world how he works out, and he's like, "This is what I do." This he's in a I'm tucked better. in. He's in a tucked in V-neck white tee, made to be an undershirt of like a suit, and he's doing fucking chest flies like this. He's probably a fucking. Yeah. He's probably. Sturdy. Wait, that was Putin, right? Was Putin. No, no, Putin. Listen, man, Putin's sturdy, dude. Bro. As a he's ex KGB, like. This yeah. is nothing to play with. This is nothing to please. Nothing to play with. But as a world leader, I don't he's believe him. Fucking up. He is fucking up. I believe him. I don't believe him. I believe. Him. I want a one on one. Oh my no, god. No, I think Putin's sturdy, bro. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think he's pretty sturdy. Dana White, the fuck is, he Dana White's bears and up. shit. Yeah, he probably just like. No, you're gonna have snow. to call Khabib because he's got that new Russian Federation going on. You're gonna mm. have to call Khabib. Main event: Eagle FC, No Limit Eddie, Vladimir Putin. Bro, I would pay everything yeah. I own to see that happen. No, Putin, I would give everything. I would give everything ever to get that. It, and it all has to do, but you know what? All this shit at the end of the day, it's all bullshit because you know Dude, all we wars. Hit, we hit on everybody. Today. We hit on pedophiles. We hit on everybody. Fuck NFTs too. Bro. Fuck NFTs. Too. I like. I can't stand that shit. But or maybe I'll release one one day. Well, you're all about the real world. NFTs are all about the virtual world. <laughs> Not here for hookup on Tinder. That's the worst. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? Like, what, yeah, like, do you mean? what are you playing? Above ground pools are worthless. The Kumo brothers are fucking worthless. <laughs> podcasts on Zoom are terrible. They're horrible. <laughs> you should never have your podcast on Zoom. Fuck There's the no pilgrims. Energy. How do you feel about Not Afraid by Eminem? What's that? The song Not Afraid by Eminem. I'm not afraid. It's the beef with that. <laughs> horrible. I don't know. Like, at, Bro, okay, horrible. listen, listen. At that point in my life, it was instant beef. But now, like, I don't know. With musicians, I'm, I have a soft spot for musicians, nah. right? Like, it's <laughs> like for great musicians, I really got a soft spot. Other than Putin, that shit's gonna be on my tombstone. <laughs> Fuck, I'm afraid, bro. I, I cannot stand that. It's where he. Di- that is where Eminem died. Eminem died at not afraid. When they're giving, they, they, they were. Like they told Eminem, me get replaced like by Eminem. a clone last week. They took Eminem's fucking soul and sucked it out of him, and then he put out not afraid. <laughs> when That's they, what when they're giving you your last rights, I'm gonna fucking not show up to the funeral, and everybody's gonna be like, damn, yo, that's fucked up. Like Eddie never came. And as soon as they're lowering you into the casket, when everybody's just there crying, I'm walking in with an old ass boombox. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> just walking. Wow. 
But yeah, man. Oh, I mean, this man. some good instant beefs. A lot of that shit. Yeah, I you can't got any stand. more other than Putin? Like, instant that's, that's beefs. An easy one. Instant beef. Yeah, like, you anything like that really beef gets that, like, under your skin. Yeah. What gets because like w- like this I, one we got from a guest, and we'll just put your name next to it if you yeah. got another one. Instant beefs. Instant beefs. I think uptight people, like people who like are like. Like, just are fucking tight for no reason. Like, have you ever seen workaholics? Like, there's loose butthole or something, mm-hmm. you know? Like, people are just fucking just Some always... Some people just... They can never crack that, that I, tightness. I know what you're I saying. Hate, they can't, they can't I have can't a, stand people moment. who look at life with the glass half empty. Mm. Because you're cutting yourself short. You know what I mean? The glass is always full. How it's just work? what you fill it negative up. Negative Nancys. It's, yeah, negative Nancys. Nancy's. <laughs> That's it. Nancy's. Negative Nancys. I can't stand negative Nancys. Oh, well. <laughs> And that's why I created this song, like, to ruin my mood and shit like that. Like, I don't like my yeah. mood getting on, my vibe getting all why fucked up. Why you gotta ruin my mood? Girl, I ain't tripping. Please don't ruin my mood. Oh, this is crazy. Damn, your voice was warmed up. Nancy's with an I-E-S. That's a first. That's for me. Plural. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the plural, Nancy? N-A-N-T-Y. I think it would be Y apostrophe S. This is crazy. You just created a new word, though. Nancy's with an I-E-S. No limit. Negative Nancy's. P A, and then put a dollar sign. Oh, I could just because yeah, instead of the C, put a dollar <gasps> sign. It's coming down. Danny Bulls knocking down the instant beef. Board I probably should just did this from the get go, huh? Instead of doing all. Oh, the oh, the dude, line. there's one that's fucking not on here. What? Are you fucking kidding me? What is it? Ben Simmons. Yo. We did have instant beef with him. I feel like that's the one that we missed. Dude, yo, yeah, yo, like the instant beef word is. Being I got added nothing against today. Ben Simmons as a human, and like if I ever talk about athletes, it's never on them as a human. Like, but fuck Ben Simmons, bro. Fuck Ben Simmons bro, for fuck everything him for the he fake stands mental for. Mental health shit, though. And I don't know if he made that shit up. Like, stop playing. Like, you two, bro, you totally are the biggest. On, dog. I didn't think it was possible. I don't even care. He signed a contract. Philly, who did Philly hate the most? In like, in what athlete did Philly hate the most? Probably T.O. No, no, no. They love T.O. T.O. came in on a broken ankle and had fucking yeah, hundred yards in the Super Bowl. Who did we Cowboys. boo the fuck out of? Like every time they came here, Kobe. We booed the shit out of Kobe. Nah, but every someone who we really despise. Like I'm telling you. But but his situation is going to be so different because like he left the team. I don't know if there's another example of that of a player who left the team and came back and is going to receive what he's going to receive. He's the most hated Philly athlete of all time, and he so. will be forever. Yeah, I think he so. will be forever because now nobody will ever make a mistake like this again in sports. Horrible city to have beef with. Like, Definitely yeah. the worst. You could have beef with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Like, why don't you go? You know, like it's one thing in a small market team, but like Philadelphia is so special. The Sixers fans are so special. Um, that it's hard not to root for them, no matter right. what team you like, because they're so fun to watch. James Harden's the shit. I would say welcome to, to Philadelphia. I would say James. maybe the closest would be Tony Romo. Eagles fans, no, nah, but they Tony respected Romo. Tony Romo at the end. They did, they did. Like Eagles fans are ruthless, but I feel like yeah. they, they also like when when they cl- when they go, right before they go to bed at night, they're like, he's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, I they're, not, they're not. I they're not. Because Romo. Tony Romo was a good quarterback. He was a good quarterback. And fuck Dak. But, like, Tony Romo was a good quarterback. Fuck Dak? Yeah, I'm not into Dak. I'm, you know, I'm a Chiefs fan, Kansas City. Um, Patrick Mahomes is the fucking GOAT. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure you fucking love that. Cut. And I enjoyed it. Dude, most of my life, it's been terrible. Like, yo, they suck. Broncos were good. Chargers were good. Yeah, you had the Chad and Henny in the yeah, world. Yeah, and we had, like, and, you know, but I do. You know, like to my Eagles fans, like you know, they're my second team, just as like the Sixers would be my second team. I'm a Lakers fan first, and I'm an authentic fan. Did like, the Lakers I'm not, beat the Spurs last night? No, they fucking lost. Damn. Yeah, it's a terrible season to be a Lakers fan. Yeah. But like, I'm enjoying seeing LeBron and his greatness in a Lakers uniform. Like, I know that's why he did it because you just want to be in that uniform. It's a beautiful uniform. It's like it's just iconic. Yeah, it's yeah, iconic. Yeah. It is, and like if he can get one more. If you can just get one more, even if it's at 40. What's he got now? Three or four? Four. Ah, yeah. If he he's going to be more. the GOAT if he gets five. He is the GOAT. To me, he's the GOAT. You think so? Yeah. Are you better than Jordan? Um, No, he's not better than Jordan. He's just the greatest he's of all time. He's just the greatest of all time. Like it's like, this, it's like the MVP versus best player in the league. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Right. But this year, it's going to be Joel Embiid because he's both. MVP. Actually, though, they, he's, were, he's they were talking about amazing. Luka, and I feel like... And John Morant. your definition... Yeah, what John Morant, ta- I think he's got to watch out for. What you're talking about by MVP versus best player, I think the MVP by that definition would have to be Luka. Because if you look at the 
Mavericks team, especially after they traded away Porzingis, yeah. he's pretty much all they got. And they just went on a five-game streak beating the top teams. It's the same thing with Embiid, though. If the Sixers didn't have Embiid, they'd probably be dead last in the East. Now that they have Harden, that's but here's different. The, no, but but here's the, you know, here's... before that, they'd probably be dead last in the fucking East without Joel Embiid. What? No. With with Harris... Steph, yes, Harris, they'd be like a seven, Maxie. eight. They'd Bro. be a playing team. Yeah, they would. They would they'd be, be a playing team. team. But so. they would be dead Rivers, last. Bro, Doc. they wouldn't be worse than the Pistons. I don't think so, bro. Bro, the Kate Pistons. Cunningham's tough. That's a different type of bed, bro. K Cunningham's tough, though. I don't think so. Yeah, he's tough. They beat the Hawks last night, I think. Maybe. Imagine well, the Sixers could <laughs> Bradley Beal next year. That's On top of that, Sixers don't else? need anything else. They have the ingredients. But the, the, the rumor it's, is now that Harden's going to take a pay cut and they're going to sign another superstar next year. Okay, cool. I think. But I think they have a great team. Uh, yeah, like I, I think, think Maxi's gonna be the next. Superstar. Maxi's fucking amazing. I'm so dude. I get so excited watching the Sixers, and I'm so happy for Philadelphia to get rid of Ben Simmons. Like, and I, I hope hey, he's. Dude, a, I hope for this March. I think it's March 11th. I'm they going play. to the game. Oh, you are. I'm going to the game. Lucky you. Yeah. I want. I want to get fire. a good picture of Ben Simmons. I want Bro, to see I'm his fucking in face. Section 124. Shout out my boy Drew. Love you, brother. But yeah, he's taking me to the game. He got tickets for uh, his girl gifted him tickets. So. Yeah, there's a there's like a pre um, WrestleMania show coming to Allentown. Look, I think they're coming uh, in the next couple weeks or something like that. I might go to that. Yeah, I. Uh, You're I'm a big WWE guy. Say. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge WWE guy. Roman Reigns fan. Simone yeah, I'm a big Dynasty Roman Reigns fan. fan. Who's your favorite all time wrestler? The Undertaker. It is the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the Undertaker. Hall of Fame this year. Scale yeah, of one to ten, how sick were you when Brock Lesnar beat him? Oh, yeah, I was shocked, bro. Me and my homie yeah. Shane. Shout out to my man Shane. He's a huge wrestling fan, too. And um, me and him always go to the events together and stuff like that. Because, you know, as you get older, nobody watches wrestling. Yeah. It's like a hush-hush thing. But now, it's, it's once niche. you once you get past 25, it's like, I love wrestling. Like, you found yeah. this new community and shit. But, um, nah, man, yeah, I'm a huge Undertaker fan. Um, did you, huge did you have a Reigns problem fan. with Brock Lesnar beating him? Oh, yeah, we're talking about that. At first, yes, but when I see Brock now, no, I have no problem because he pe- basically what Taker did was pass the torch to Brock Lesnar, and at that time I didn't think Brock was completely committed to it, you yeah, know. But he's but definitely he's is. definitely committed to it right now. Yeah, and it was all worth it. That was my biggest problem with it. But again, who else? Now seeing Brock Lesnar now, and he is like really buying in on the whole thing. And it's like lucky Roman got a win too because like. Roman's like the next big thing after Brock Lesnar. Well, it would have been so sick yeah. for this year's WrestleMania because the Undertaker's going in the Hall of Fame. Um, I can't take credit for this idea. I did see it somewhere oh, else, shit. but I just think it was it would be amazing if the Undertaker came back and their match became a triple threat: Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, and oh, the Undertaker. God. Or if he just in was his a, last match because yeah. it's. Both guys that beat him, yeah. and he fucking wins. That, I would yeah. love to see that. He's too old. Avenge both I would like to see him come through as an the enforcer. United, win the unified you know? championship and retire for good. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited about it. Like, I just, you know, everybody. I remember being at the Royal Rumble in 2015, and everybody booing Roman Reigns when he won. You the were Rumble. there? Yeah. Man. I saw Chris Benoit win it. Yeah. Oh shit. Chris Damn. Benoit. Yeah, that way back. Damn. Crazy Chris Benoit. But yeah, man. So <laughs> now I think it's gonna Chris be Benoit. Chris Benoit. <laughs> it's like hush hush. You can't say that shit. Yeah. Dude. But Reggie, more people that, are saying it now. Do you see our Royal Revival episode? Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, you gotta catch Royal Revival. Check who number thirty is. I got you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Was this like a, a fantasy Royal Rumble? Yeah, yep. but only superstars only who were dead. Word. Mm-hmm. And we did it on the podcast. Like, <laughs> we just improv it. We just randomized the Royal names Revival on the and the Who concept. won the Royal the Rumble? Co- Come on, I ain't going to tell you. Gonna... Eddie Guerrero? No. Nah, he was in the Final Four. He didn't win. Oh, shit. Uh, it was, it was, that's it was why a crazy it's the concept, Royal Revival. And the, the idea is that the winner gets to come back to life. Mm-hmm. Damn, who won? I can't tell you, Fuck. bro. You got to watch. You got to check Damn. it out. All right, bro. Any, anything else that you want to tell the No Limit audience? No, I just appreciate y'all having me. It's been fun. We should yeah, probably do it again sometime. Sure. And uh, no, I got my single "So What" coming out. You can check me out on all streaming platforms. Prince Alexander, uh, instead of a C, it's a dollar sign. On Instagram, it's I T S P A from P A. And uh, any artists, you can reach out to me too. I'm always down to help. Hey. For sure. No, thank you for coming on. Alex. This was a great episode. My man. For sure. That's been it. No Limit Podcast, episode sixty-seven. We'll see you next week. Peace. Love you.